This short module will introduce you to the Joint Polar Satellite System, or JPSS, a cooperative Japanese-US effort. Currently, JPSS consists of two near-polar orbiting satellites in the same sun-synchronous orbit. Suomi NPP, the Japanese satellite, and NOAA-20, the US satellite. Three additional satellites are planned for launch over the next decade. The satellites are in daytime ascending orbits with equator crossing times of about 1.30 p.m. NOAA-20 lags Suomi NPP by about 50 minutes, such that the sub-satellite nadir point of NOAA-20 is a little to the west of that of Suomi NPP. The satellites provide high-quality data in locations where GOES cannot, such as in high latitudes where the poles are observed once per hour. The addition of future satellites will increase the temporal resolution at the poles. Data with slightly higher resolution than GOES, especially in the IR channels, is also collected in the middle and low latitudes. Although unlike GOES, the data is collected in swaths about 3,000 kilometers wide. And what we're seeing here on the bottom is a composite image uh, from the JPSS satellite system over the North Pole, which is located about here. And you can see some sea ice and clouds as well and uh, land ice over Greenland. The figure here shows how the two orbits of Suomi NPP and NOAA-20 relate to each other. As NOAA-20 ascends, Suomi NPP descends on the opposite side of Earth. The satellites have nighttime equator crossing times of about 1.30 a.m., such that the two platforms cross the equator moving in different directions on opposite sides of Earth. NOAA 20 carries five main instruments, and Suomi MPP carries similar instrumentation. The cross track infrared sounder, shown here, or CRIS, is a sounder with high spectral resolution, detecting radiation in over 3,000 spectral bands. The location of the bands are on the edges of water vapor and oxygen absorption bands, meaning that the weighting functions of the various channels peak at different levels in the atmosphere. This makes CRIS a suitable instrument for estimating vertical profiles of temperature and humidity. The Advanced Technology Microwave Sounder, or ATMS, has 22 channels in the microwave part of the spectrum. It generally has lower spatial resolution than CRIS. However, because microwave radiation is not as efficiently scattered by clouds as infrared radiation, ATMS can collect vertical profiles of temperature and humidity in cloudy areas and together with CRIS provide comprehensive coverage of the entire planet. The Ceres Flight Model 6 instrument, shown here, is the latest in a series of Ceres instruments dating back to 1997. It is capable of providing accurate measurements of surface and top of atmosphere radiative fluxes. Based on observed clouds, it also provides estimates of coarse atmospheric profiles of radiative fluxes that are consistent with derived surface and observed top of atmosphere fluxes. And it also provides some information about the cloud properties visible to the sensor. This provides a useful tool for a variety of research applications. You can find the data for series at the link in the bottom right. The Ozone Mapping and Profiler Suite, or OMPS, maps column integrated ozone in 50 kilometer wide boxes. Profiles of ozone concentration are also estimated but have lower spatial resolution. These are useful for tracking tropospheric ozone and monitoring stratospheric ozone at the poles. The visible infrared and imaging radiometer, or VIRS, is most like the ABI on GOES. It passively detects radiation from a variety of shortwave and longwave bands in the visible near IR, and terrestrial IR. A summary of the VIRS bands is seen here. Note that multiple visible bands are used, contrasted with just the two or three on GOES or Himawari. Many bands are clustered in the violet to blue part of the visible spectrum. 
These are useful for deriving ocean color in combination with the green and the red bands, including quantities such as chlorophyll concentration, total absorption, or particulate backscatter in the water. Fears bands are also used for detection of aerosols, which more easily scattered low wavelength light. Quantities such as aerosol optical depth can be derived from Vera's visible reflectances. The low Earth orbit of the JPSS satellites also allows infrared data collected to have higher spatial resolution than that of GOES, as seen by these columns on the left, or the far right column in the right table. <clears throat> At Nader, resolution is nominally 742 by 776 meters or better in all channels. VIRS can also provide estimates of soil moisture and ice surface temperature, and is useful for monitoring of sea ice. An example of a daily composite of VIRS-derived RGB imagery from NOAA-20 is shown here. You can see how far successive orbits are from each other because of swaths of sun glint that appear equally spaced apart. Here's one, there's another one, there's another one, and another, and so on and so forth. Monthly average global chlorophyll concentrations derived from Suomi MPP VIRS are seen here. This product is available at 4 km grid spacing. The warm colors, which are mostly near coasts of all of the continents except for Antarctica, represent enhanced chlorophyll concentrations, which is indicative of active phytoplankton. Several dead zones can be seen in blue and purple. We can zoom in on various parts of the world because we have high resolution and see various quantities in greater detail. For example, enough spatial resolution is available to see differences in chlorophyll concentrations, also shown here, on opposite sides of Monterey Bay, where chlorophyll concentrations in this month, which was uh, March 2020, I believe, are higher on the north side of Monterey Bay. An example of aerosol optical depth in one visible band is shown here. Some features stand out in this snapshot. Saharan dust is denoted by a bright red area over western Africa. Aerosols in northeastern China are also seen, and pollution in northern India is visible. Biomass burning in equatorial Africa is also apparent. Click the link in the slides down here to see an animation of this product over a three month long period in 2020 at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. The JPSS satellites captured some regional variability in aerosols in normally heavily polluted areas such as northern India, although you'll notice that biomass burning persists in many places, especially in South Asia. Brightness temperatures at various bands can be displayed for the CRIS instrument on NOAA 20. Shown here is one example at 11 microns. It is obvious from these two panels that NOAA 20 is in a daytime ascending orbit. For comparison, ATMS brightness temperature is shown at 23.8 gigahertz. We'll discuss microwave data more later in the quarter, but you may note how brightness temperatures are markedly different from IR brightness temperature. Also, a swath of heightened microwave brightness temperature is present in along each swath. It is a manifestation of sun glint of solar microwave radiation reflected off of Earth. Finally, the total column integrated ozone product is shown from Suomi MPP. Enhanced ozone is seen by the red and yellow colors, mainly along storm tracks in the northern and southern hemispheres while depleted ozone is obvious near the South Pole in this image. These are just a few of the products that are available from the JPSS satellite system, and I encourage you to look up many others that are available at the websites linked throughout this video.